My enemies are many. My equals are none. In the shade of olive trees, they said Italy could never be conquered. In the land of pharaohs and kings, they said Egypt could never be humbled. In the realm of forest and snow, they said Russia could never be tamed. Now they say nothing. They fear me, like a force of nature, a dealer in thunder and death. I say, I am Napoleon. I am Emperor. Hello guys and welcome to Napoleon Total War. Today we're going to be starting a new coalition campaign playing as Great Britain going for world domination victory conditions of course. That means we have to take and hold 60 regions including the regions shown on the map by late December 1812. We are going to be playing it on the hardest difficulty very hard on both campaign and battle difficulty there. And I'm really, really looking forward to getting into Napoleon Total War. Years ago, I used to play this a lot online. And I think it's just because the battles in general in Napoleon Total War are much improved from Empire Total War. So I'm looking forward to checking that out again. Now, I'm playing Britain because I'm British, of course. And I decided to play the Coalition campaign because I believe it is the largest campaign in the game. So it will give us... Uh, plenty to do that's for sure now, if you'd like to see any of the other factions or any of the other campaigns uh, then make sure to let me know in the comments and i'll add them to the future poll either way let's start by reading the nation description great britain is a constitutional monarchy a nation of free trade and personal liberty its people are seemingly devoted to making money and disliking foreigners in equal measure. Foreigners are, quite simply, just not very good at anything, be that running an empire or making a decent pie. Britons make no secret of their prejudice, a crass attitude that makes diplomacy difficult. The English, as much to the annoyance of the Scots everyone calls them, are disliked in every court in Europe for this arrogance and their willingness to let everyone else do the fighting and dying against the French. The apparent truth of this last point has been a gift to Bonaparte. If the British do have a truly visceral dislike, then it would be the French. Thanks to traditional rivalry and a genuine horror at the consequences of the French Revolution. While many British politicians were pleased to see an end to the Bourbon dynasty, or monarchy, sorry, they were repulsed by the insatiable bloodshed of the terror, and fearful that the infection of revolution might cross the English Channel with or without French bayonets to help it along. Invasion is a constant fear, and, as always, an enemy in control of the Low Countries is enough to scare London. Britain's position in 1805 is better than might be expected, but not due to its own efforts. Napoleon has managed to upset almost every other nation in Europe with his high-handedness. This is an opportunity for the British to build a new alliance, although this will mean paying handsome subsidies to its partners. As long as the Royal Navy can keep control of the seas, Britain is safe from invasion. But without a substantial army and continental allies, this counts for little against France. Britain can contribute to the downfall of France, but needs time and resolve to muster its strength. Napoleon may not grant that time. So we're all set. Let's start the game. 
Napoleon and his godless revolutionaries have no respect for the status quo. They insist on meddling with the balance of power on mainland Europe. Defenseless Liguria has been annexed by France, and such behaviour cannot be tolerated. As a result, Great Britain has joined forces with Austria and Russia to oppose French continental ambitions. Sweden, Portugal and the smaller Italian states have vowed to aid the struggle, but the three great powers must take most of the strain in opposing this monstrous revolutionary threat. Whilst Austria and Russia attempt to deal with Napoleon on the fields of Bavaria, you must ensure that his navy is kept in check. Admiral Villeneuve's fleet must be intercepted by the Royal Navy, lest the armies of France march on British shores. Then, ensure blockades are maintained across all French ports. Finally, your long-standing ally Portugal must be aided in pushing through into occupied Spain, opening a second front and splitting the might of Napoleon's armies. And here we are, at London. <laughs> With our army nearby, right to move your army to any part I'm probably going to have to turn off the advice. <laughs> but either way, we have Arthur Wellesley here. He is in control of some line infantry. We have some King's German Legion foot, and a couple of nine-pounder foot artillery, and a couple of light dra dragoons. In London itself, we do have some extra troops, so let's just move them out into the other army. Let's go ahead and change our game settings. I will probably just turn off the campaign advice for now. And if you guys have any tips, then make sure to let me know if you think I'm missing anything. It's been a long, long time since I picked up Napoleon. So, yeah, I'm going to need all the help I can get. Anyway, we can probably do some funky stuff here already. I reckon we can likely just go into port, right? Get our guys on the ships immediately and jump over to France. So let's go ahead and do that. Are we even at war with them yet? Yeah, we are. Okay, let's go and take <laughs> Normandy. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Good start, everybody. Let's peacefully occupy. And that is now ours. Great. So from there, we'll probably go and take... Uh, Rennes, and maybe we could even go as far to attack Paris, but we will see. So, I am going to want to continue building up more troops. Uh, we do have a bunch of income. Let's have a look exactly how much money we're making, though. The so income next turn is only 300. And how much do these cost in upkeep? 236. We actually can't maintain that much more. But there is some extra units still hanging about here. We've got some fencibles in Ireland, uh, which we can go and pick up with our navy at some point. Now uh, We also have some Highland Foot in Scotland. And in Wales, we have the Light Foot and the Standard Line Infantry. Okay. Uh, well, we may as well move all of these down. Have them all come down. I'm going to get John Moore down here as well just to move to London for the time being. And what we can do is give him an army. Same deal with Michael Stowell. I guess these fencibles in Dublin... Uh, actually, I, I may as well move them out. I was going to say, if they don't cost much upkeep, then we could just leave them there. But no, we definitely need all the help we can get. Now here... I'm probably going to want to get a trading port and here we're likely going to want to get a market so we'll do both of those anything that incre increases wealth in general like a trading port up here is great get all of that going I assume is the right thing to do it looks like most of the stuff around England is already upgraded for the most part we have an industrial center in Wales that is not upgraded. We're definitely going to go for the manufactory and not the gunsmith. That is fine. And that should certainly help us with some income. So uh, let's build one line infantry. How much can we actually build all in one go? Okay, we can build up to five units at once. I'm probably just going to go for one line infantry for now because I don't want to put my income in a state where we're at a deficit. Sir? 
As for our gentlemen, I think they work the same way as they did in Empire, so probably best to put them in the college, I assume. And that's opened up our technology. So we should probably choose a technology. And uh, what technologies do we have here? There's fire in advance, in the diamond formation conscription, uh, which increases recruitment slots in your home region by plus one. That's not too bad. Although saying that we don't have the money to even recruit five units yet. So I guess it doesn't matter too much. Uh, Karen aid, probably not going to use too many of those. We've got classical economics already researched and national debt could be the next one minus five percent upkeep cost for all army units is very nice and the extra wealth per turn in all regions is also very good public schooling would be a one to pick up sooner than later due to the plus 10 percent to technology research rate but i believe we'll probably go towards national debt just going to have a look at some of these other units though or these other technologies sorry extra campaign map movement range is always nice but these will require upgraded barracks so i think i'm just going to go for national debt for now the industrial ones aren't going to be too handy except from potentially this one the minus five percent upkeep for all naval units is pretty nice since i think ships do cost a lot of money to upkeep yeah, look at that. Wow. How much is the, of that is going towards our expenses? 4,054 in naval upkeep. Yeah, so that's certainly something we want to keep an eye on. But we're going to go and chase down Villeneuve here. So let's go and take him out with Horatio Nelson. Check him out with his high <laughs> leadership ability. Wow. Of course, it is the famous Nelson himself. I'm probably going to want to send off some other ships there, honestly. But we could always raid the trade to get ourselves a little bit more money this turn. Let's see. It'd be the Batavian Republic that we would be raiding. Is it Batavian or Batavian? <laughs> Either way. Uh, I might just send this Navy go to go down and join Horatio Nelson. Since we already have uh, this small naval, naval uh, well, Navy here. <laughs> uh, which can ferry across troops. And I don't think there's any more French ships around here as far as I'm aware. Uh, although I guess we'll find out as we continue. But regardless, we already made a good move there. Let's maybe jump into diplomatic relations. We have already attacked France, so that may increase the other nation's opinion of us. Have a look. We are already allied with Austria. Are they at war with France already? They are, so we don't need to set that up ourselves. Uh, Prussia is very friendly with us. Uh, maybe we can ally with them as well and get a trade agreement. Maybe I can ask them for a payment as well. Since they are very friendly with us and they are rich. I'm not sure if this is enough. I'm little to commend them. Oh boy. Alright, let's just request a trade agreement for now. That will certainly help us out in terms of income. Let's have a quick look. Let's put our income up by 310. Uh, we'll just go and ask Russia, I guess, for a trade agreement as well. And we could also do the same with Mecklenburg. I'm not sure if there's a limit on how many trade options we can have, but we'll ask. Great. So Portugal and Mecklenburg. I guess Portugal, the trade would be worth more, potentially. That's good. And Mecklenburg will do that as well. Okay, great. So I don't think there is any particular limit. As long as we have a sea route to their capital. So we've opened up loads of trade. That's given us 1,388 per turn now. 
Nothing else to do there. I could potentially ally with more people, but I'm just not going to for now. We are actually at war with Spain. Um, that's because they were under control, I believe, of France at this time. They were occupied, so we are going to have to keep an eye on Gibraltar. That's going to be quite awkward, actually, to hold on to. Right. So, tempted to put the money into the trading port, but uh, maybe best to just leave that for now and just build a few more troops here. Just get another militia squad there for now. And on the mainland, let's have a look at infrastructure. We'll get the basic roads building, which will give us the extra town wealth per turn. I guess I could do that across the board. And that's going to use up the rest of my money. I didn't really want to use up all of my money, just in case I needed more. But after setting up all these trade routes and stuff, uh, we're going to have a decent income. And uh, we are in a nice position already to just move straight on to Paris, depending on what exactly is there. Right. So, I think it's time to press the end turn button. See what happens. France is uh, doing a runner down the bottom as we will follow them with Horatio Nelson. Nelson can just keep all of the navies in the Mediterranean to be honest if we just sit by Gibraltar. Because if we chase into the Mediterranean then I don't think we're ever going to really catch up. Anyway, the Ottoman Empire has declared war on Austria. And we will enter on the side of our ally. The Confederation of the Rhine. Although nominally independent states, the German lands along the eastern banks of the River Rhine are but mere pawns of the so-called Republic of France. Their lords bend the knee to the Grand Emperor and kiss his boots like any other of his lackeys. There is no time for diplomatic bean counting. In this great war you stand either with us or against us, and they have chosen. We must, in all aspects, regard these territories as French possessions. Okay, so I'm not entirely sure uh, what's here and if we have enough to actually take that on. So, I am more inclined to attack then first, and then uh, maybe come back to Khan afterwards. Uh, because then we will have the Highland Foot coming down. We've got the two units from Wales available. And I think that will work out a lot better. Also, this is worth more than Khan is. So let's just go and take that. Thank you very much. Uh, we can't actually demand a surrender. But we are going to take it. We could actually, in fact, liberate them. A liberation will give rise to a new protectorate in the region, loyal to your nation whilst diplomatic relations are strong. Resource, resources permitting a force of conscripts will be granted to the liberating army on behalf of the new protectorate. That could be a good idea, actually. But we're just going to occupy it. <laughs> I'm just going to go full domination in this campaign for sure. All right, we will put the roads into this because we're going to be sitting here this turn. Um, and that will allow us to move back towards Khan nice yes, and easy. Uh, this can move into port. I may as well bring our generals across, yes. I think. I guess it depends how many units we have overall. Because that's another four units. How many do we have left to fill here? So we have three more slots. And we're going to have the line infantry finish next turn. I'm actually going to add another one to that queue since our upkeep or income, sorry, is a lot better now. I'm going to continue down the coast here, of course. And it may be worth getting some ships into the trade posts down here ASAP. I'm not sure exactly... How we build those. I assume we just build them from trade ports. But this is a little risky. France and Spain could attack Horatio Nelson and that won't end too well. So 
Uh, what I may do, in fact, is get my 32-gun frigate to go with this navy. We'll leave our admiral here to make the ferrying uh, happen. And, yeah, that will have to do for now. So we'll probably lose Khan again. I'm not too concerned about that. We'll keep him in Portsmouth for now. And I'm going to look at building these trade vessels. So merchantmen, they cost 575. How long do they take to build? I may in fact just build one of those instead of the line infantry. I think it's pretty important to get those online. Yeah, we'll do that. Okay. Right, let's end the turn. Fenspools are going to be moving themselves down. And it looks like France has moved their navy round us, which allows us to attack the navy. Because they'll likely be in range. So, we may have a naval battle on our hands, which is really awesome. I absolutely adore the naval battles in Empire Total War and Napoleon Total War. Enemy fleet ahead. Never mind. <laughs> looks like we're up against the Spanish first. Now this is a little bit worrying because if we were to play this out manually, their guns are way better than ours. They have a 140 gun ship, 400 firepower, 4380 hull strength. Our 122 gun heavy first rate is not quite up to snuff. Hmm. Interesting. I could auto resolve and take the win, but we're going to play it out just because auto resolve for naval battles is pretty weird sometimes. It will make us lose ships unnecessarily when they'd just be damaged if we were to play it out. So this is going to be. Quite something. We're going to have to make sure that we get our tactics right here. But look how gorgeous these ships look. Damn. Very nice indeed. So I think what we're going to do, we're going to do a single line. Uh, we actually have the wind in our favour, which is good. And so we can pull off to the left and use the wind against them. That's what we're going to be doing. And I'll group them and we'll get underway. Right, come on Horatio Nelson, show us what you're made of. We're going to want to try and keep our guns at maximum range. It may be best to cut right initially and then left, because then we sort of use the wind better. Also, we get to shoot into the front of them before taking any of our own broadsides. Yeah, we'll shift to the right. And I'm going to get those top gallants down so that we can speed this up. They're going to be going very slow due to the lack of wind. Look at this bad boy. The Santissima Trinidad. Big old Spanish ship. <laughs> Look, it moves so slow through the water. Its displacement is ridiculous. I'm probably just going to have to, like, manually move our ship here. I wonder if I could broadside already. I think I'd be just out of range, wouldn't it? We could t fire a test broadside, I guess. Oh, we did hit. We did hit. Very good. Alright, well, I guess we can do that again. 
Get those guns reloaded. Keep hitting it from range. We already disabled four guns with that. And there goes a fifth. The firepower we can take out of that, all the firepower we can take out, the better. And what I'm going to do is try and decrease the speed of this vessel. And uh, we will have it try and keep up here. And we can just keep firing these broadsides at max range. I'm going to have to just slow all of these down. Otherwise, they are going to all bump into each other and it's going to get very unwieldy. Okay, so far so good. We're taking this as slow as possible, quite simply so that I can get as much damage off before they can fire back. Which is basically the whole idea of naval combat anyway, is to keep your enemy at range, use the wind to your advantage, all that good stuff. Yeah, we've already done a nice amount of damage there. And look at this smoke effect. Oh, it's just gorgeous, isn't it? Imagine being on that ship and wondering why your captain isn't telling you to fire. <laughs> okay, there we go. <laughs> I said that it was ready to fire, but it wasn't. Ah yes, the, uh, the one gun broadside, that's what we like to see. Oh damn, here we go. Starting to engage us now. Get our broadsides online though. I think I've broken the indicator. keep going with these broadsides for now. We have done a lot of hull damage. I could probably hit that smaller vessel actually. Uh, this one may as well just fire on its own now, I think. Yeah, let that one fire it well. Damn, look at those guns firing away. Ridiculous. I'm gonna hover over it to see how, if the guns are loaded, because it says they are, but they aren't. Normally the outer ring would notify you that the guns are reloaded, but in this case it's just not. I'm just waiting for the broadsides. Okay, they're actually on fire, that's really good. Start doing some damage to the secondary ship there. I'm probably going to have to turn this one into the wind because the uh, the left side there is really damaged. Also, all of these ships should probably get a move on. Uh, we can probably shift a lot of them to the left. It may be a good idea now actually to just turn around. We're going to continuously hit this side of the ship. Good old Nelson's in actually a really good position, but this 106 gun second rate is really not in a good position. It's going to take a lot of damage. Oh, 
I'm really hoping that I can just disable most of the guns on this side. ASAP. There can't be many guns left. Oh, this ship is getting annihilated. Wow. Okay. Time to fix that, I think. Okay, now we're just trading volleys, but they pretty much lost all of their guns on the right side. Oh, please don't turn around. Uh, we're going to want to keep on its on its right side, otherwise we're in trouble. I guess we could fire into its rear. Go on, get those guns firing. Right, this one's going to want to try and repair. <laughs> Meanwhile, the rest of our ships need to start engaging. One of our ships is withdrawing from the fight. That's not good. I think my ship's sinking. Yeah, it is. We're going to have to manually fire. Come on now. Okay, let's turn around and come back up onto this ship. Okay. I'm probably going to need to turn this one around as well. Or we could maybe try and cut through, but not sure about that. Right, let's make sure that our guns are firing at all times. We can get some really good shots into the rear of that ship. There we go, lovely. I think I did well initially to dictate the ranged engagement, but now it's just we're in, we're in trouble because that ship turned around and we didn't end up singing, sinking it. And do as much damage as possible. Let's see if we can swing round and get another volley off. My poor men here drowning as the ship goes down. Damn. A big old ship to lose as well. The worst part about this is if we lose our navy now, then there's not much else I can do against the French. Oh my. That is a nasty volley to take there. They're very accurate as well. One of our ships is withdrawing from the fight. Well, he's just been wrecked. That's not good. Go on, Nelson. You can do it. You can do it. Well, the last two ships don't really matter too much because they are just merchantmen, but the rest of the ships we need to try and take on ASAP. Also, I am having some quite awful artifacts on screen so if you are seeing that then I apologize the game is struggling a little bit well not FPS wise but there's certainly some weird stuff going on with the graphics right now All right, let's spin this around
Uh, this AT gun third rate really hasn't been doing too well for us. It's not been engaging at all. One nice thing here is because all of the enemy ships are close together, any cannons that are missing are actually hitting the units behind, so that's very, very good for us. Right, let's just swing round and fire the other side. Great. Yeah, we are destroying these two at the front really, really well, actually. Let's bring our guns to bear. Fire away, boys. Swing it back the other way. There we go, we're getting another nice volley into the Santissima Trinidad. And this ship of the line surely going to go down soon. It's The hull damage is crazy. There is no way. Damn. <laughs> that ship also took a ton of damage. Right, we're going to have to turn this one around. We've managed to get them in a really nice position. But that one's sinking. Yeah, looks like we're all good there. Don't need to fire at that one anymore, guys. <laughs> That's a goner. <laughs> Want to be uh, putting shots into that one. We give it the order to shoot, and then maybe I can just slow these down. And just keep firing. Is that the good side? I think it is. It's currently firing at us. Or is it? No, it looks like potentially the bad side. <laughs> well, both sides look absolutely battered, but I don't know. It's hard to tell. Trying to get as many guns on as I can. Come on. Come on, guys. You can do it. Yeah, they currently got the good side at us. Which is a bit awkward. Ooh, that's good. Good timing there, actually. <laughs> thing that might be worth doing is just charging our ship right through the middle of them. And then have these guys continue to go wide. Wow! There's an explosion. That's one ship down. Very nice. Oh, it's going to take a lot of damage though. 
Maybe we can swing and sway in the meantime. Our Admiral is in mortal danger. Yes, he is. <laughs> and he knows it. <laughs> One took a massive volley. Very nice. But if we can cut through the back of them there, that'd be fantastic. Trust Horatio Nelson to get all the work done. <laughs> incredible. This is such an incredible battle. Holy shit. There goes one of our ships. <laughs> Alright, that one should sink soon. It's keeled over massively. Right, and this ship's just about keeping ahead. Go on. Up the ass. There we go. Ho oh. ho. We might actually win this, which would be incredible. Certainly need to fix up our navy though if that's the case. <laughs> well, I don't have to be too worried about that merchantman. I do, however, need to take care of this 122 gunship. We need to start shooting that instead of the Santissima. Do I even have any guns left on that side? Not now sure. Oh, there he goes. There he goes. We got him, boys. Damn, we got such a good position here with this ship. Now we just gotta surround this guy. Make sure we finish him off. He is on fire. He is on fire. Glorious victory, sir, is soon to be yours. Damn, what a naval battle to start. <laughs> I was a little worried, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> but we will end it there. That is a heroic victory, apparently. Wow. The point at which we got them kind of stuck and we had four ships firing onto their like clumped up ships was the point at which we won that we destroyed all eight of those ships it would have been nice to be able to capture them but i guess that will have to do incredible stuff and we're back to our turn so that does actually give us the ability to go and hide in gibraltar uh, so that's not too bad however it is going to allow the french navy to get past we definitely need to fix up though <laughs> so there we go and that's going to require me to build a dockyard here, uh, which I'm going to do. I will get the military dockyard, since it is, of course, Gibraltar. That was what it was there for. Uh, but I'm going to have to be very careful with these extra ships coming down. So let's go ahead and get them back into port with our other ships here. And we will build ourselves some new ships. Uh, the biggest one I can build is a 38-gun Bithrate, which is not very big for what we probably need. So it'll get to a point where I can fix up Horatio Nelson's fleet and uh, then we can take on France. So that was absolutely incredible, guys. I had a lot of fun with that. And destroying the Spanish Navy is one step to dominating the seas, that's for sure. Now we have our army here. Uh, it looks like Calm was not taken back. 
so we're going to have the opportunity to meet up all of our troops at uh, Normandy and then we can head on to Paris after that. So there we go, we'll bring this army down. Uh, we got the extra troops in here. Uh, let's bring my second best general along as well. And uh, he, they can all join in there. And then we can just add them to this army, which will more or less max it out. Now we do have... Do we have another one building? We don't. We could probably just add a unit of militia just to finish things off. We get 1,987 income next turn, especially considering a couple of our ships sunk. So they aren't going to be giving us the extra anymore. Uh, the extra upkeep, that is. These are going to cost a lot to fix up. Look how much experience Horatio Nelson got there from destroying all of those ships. We got him into a really nice position in between those ships at the end. Saved that from almost disaster. So yeah, the naval battles shining as always. But unfortunately, guys, it has been my time. I am going to leave it here. In the next episode, what we'll do is potentially march on Paris. If we could take that from Napoleon straight away, then uh, we are in an awesome, awesome position. Our trade ports are going to end up being finished at some point. And we've also got our roads now building. So our income is just going to shoot up and everything will be, will be, will be good, basically. If you're new to the channel and are enjoying the series, then make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications to keep up with the campaign in the future. But thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye.